you may have heard of microdosing, the practice of taking tiny amounts of psychedelic drugs such as LSD with the hope of gaining some kind of brain boost. People who microdose claim that it makes them more productive, more focused, more creative. But does it actually have any of these effects? Researchers are starting to investigate what, if anything, microdosing actually does by running some of the first placebo-controlled studies on the practice. People who microdose aren't trying to get high. There's no real consensus on what size dose actually counts as a microdose, but most people report taking anywhere between a 20th and a 10th of a full or recreational dose of LSD or other psychedelic drugs, such as magic mushrooms or truffles, which contain the psychedelic compound psilocybin. Taken in such small amounts, these drugs don't have the trippy visual and audio effects you might usually associate with psychedelics, but some people claim that they have more subtle, even sub-perceptual, beneficial effects. While microdosing is often associated with Silicon Valley productivity hacker types, many in the microdosing community reject this image and say that it's actually about much more than getting ahead in the workplace. And some people microdose in an attempt to self-medicate conditions such as depression, ADHD, or chronic pain, which by the way, we don't recommend. The problem is, we don't really know what microdosing actually does, or if it does anything at all. And we also don't know if it may have some negative effects, particularly over a prolonged period of time. Beyond anecdotal reports, there's very little scientific research on the topic. That's partly down to the difficulty of doing any research using these compounds, which in many countries are controlled substances. That makes it difficult to get funding and approval to run studies using them, and also presents practical and ethical barriers to procuring and administering the drugs. A few studies so far have found some initial suggestions that microdosing could improve mood or enhance creativity, but these are largely based on people reporting their own subjective experiences, which is often inaccurate, and they also don't have a placebo control. A placebo control is where you run a study and give one group of people a real treatment and another group of people a pretend treatment without telling them which is which. And that's important because even if people say they experience some effects from microdosing, and we have no reason to doubt them if they do, we can't rule out the possibility that that's caused by the placebo effect instead of the drug itself. In fact, there's the potential for microdosing to be particularly susceptible to the placebo effect. That's because the placebo effect is linked to expectation. If you expect that something is going to have a certain effect, you're more likely to then perceive that it does. Given the drugs people generally use to microdose are illegal in many countries, those who choose to take them presumably really believe they're going to get some benefit from them. Otherwise, they wouldn't take the risk and go to all the trouble of getting them in the first place. Microdosers also often have previous positive experience with psychedelics, hence their interest in microdosing in the first place which, again, could contribute to a placebo response. This is a very self-selecting group of people that we're talking about. And then there's the fact that the whole point of microdosing is the effects are supposed to be barely noticeable, which makes them tricky to distinguish from any other potential contributing factors. Are you having a good day today because you took a microdose, or because you're just, you know, having a good day? Now, a few different groups of researchers are starting to run placebo-controlled studies to try to find out more. In these studies, Participants don't know whether they're taking a microdose or a placebo. They're then asked to complete various tasks to test their cognitive function and psychological well-being. By running a placebo-controlled trial, researchers can see if there's any differences between those who took microdoses and those who took placebos, thus controlling for the placebo response. One group of researchers in Leiden, the Netherlands, are doing a placebo-controlled study with magic truffles, which are legal in the Netherlands. They show participants how to prepare a microdose of magic truffle and put it into an opaque pill capsule, which they then mix up out of sight with placebo pills. They take the pills regularly over the course of some weeks and then go into the university to do some computer-based tasks that test things like memory, reaction time, and creativity. One creativity task, for example, asks participants to list all the uses they can think of for a particular object. Say, for example, a towel. You might dry yourself with it, but maybe you could also fashion it into a skirt or roll it up and use it as a pillow. Another set of researchers in the UK is doing a similar study, but remotely. They never actually meet the participants. Instead, they give them instructions on how to conduct a self-blinding procedure to mix up their microdoses and placebos at home 
in such a way that they don't know which ones they're taking when until the end of the study. The participants then complete online tasks and submit the results. These studies have limitations. They rely heavily on the existing microdosing community to take part, which, as we've covered, isn't necessarily a representative sample. And the researchers have to trust that the participants will follow the procedure correctly and won't try to break the placebo control, for example, by looking inside their capsules. Another study in the Netherlands sees researchers actually administer microdoses of LSD to participants in the lab, which means they have much more control over it, but that it's a very small sample size. This particular study is testing different microdoses from 5 to 25 micrograms to try to establish the smallest possible dose that has an observable effect. So what do we know? Does microdosing have the benefits its proponents claim, or is it just homeopathy with psychedelics? As with most scientific research, the answer remains very much inconclusive. It's a work in progress. The most recent studies haven't yet published their results, and they're casting a very large net looking at all kinds of different potential effects. If they find compelling evidence for one particular effect, say improved mood or creativity, then the next step would be to run another, more specific study with more stringent controls on the dosage and administration of the drug, which of course all takes time and money. One of the things we do already know from participants in one of the studies, however, is that some of those who thought they were microdosing were in fact taking placebos, and some of those who thought they were in the placebo group were in fact microdosing. So for now, all we can really say, more research required. <laughs>